Hey group, Huck and I are out here in the forest today to show y'all how to cook steak on a rock. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's show you what we're working with. Check out this piece of meat right here, guys. Big slab of beef, beautiful cut. That's what we're working with today, as well as this beautiful stone right here. So it's a big old slab of rhyolite, and that's what we're gonna be cooking our steak on here in just a moment. So we've got our fireplace over here. Time to get a fire going, hook a few things up, and get that meat on the heat. Our fire's getting started up. We don't want to throw all the wood in there all at once. The biggest mishap we can have with this whole process is to heat up our stone too quickly. If it heats up too fast, it'll go ahead and expand and it'll crack the rock. And there's still a good chance that the rock cracks anyway. That's just what you're dealing with when you're trying to cook with primitive tools. So we'll go ahead and heat this thing up slowly this is kind of like a big piece of cast iron, three or four times thicker than cast iron. So it's gonna take a little while to heat it up. So be patient, let's let the fire do what it does. And if there's any moisture left in this rock, hopefully it evaporates slowly out while we warm this thing up. So far, so good. Start to heat up. It's enough to make maybe toast right now. No popping, no cracking just yet. All's well. I'm gonna add a few more pieces of wood, get those coals built up. All right, coming up on eight or nine minutes. And that is that is definitely hot enough to cook an egg down. Our wood is starting to burn a little cleaner. You see the smoke start to dissipate. Should be another four or five minutes. We just wanna make sure we put a really good sear on the steak. We don't wanna throw it on there until it's time. All right, we are mere moments from being ready to throw our steak up here on this rock. Now, just like cast iron, if you got it, use some shortening, and we're gonna go ahead and put that here on this rock. Whew, that's hot. And that is gonna season the rock a little bit, kinda help it out, make sure that we don't have some real big issues when it comes to steak sticking. Let that melt down a little bit. I imagine it'll probably flame up here in just a moment. Yeah. A little bit of grease never hurt anybody. Good stuff. Good. Finishing touches. A little bit of seasoning, a little bit of salt. This is made by 
Three Amigos Chupacabra seasoning, and it is fantastic stuff. Put some back there as well. Oh, my goodness. If y'all could just smell this, this smells phenomenal. All right, well, moment of truth, group. There we go. It's a beautiful sound. All right. It's coming up on about three minutes. Let's see how our rock's done. As you've used a rock multiple times, you'll get used to it. You'll find out what their heat tolerances are, how long it takes to cut certain things on them. It's like any other piece of equipment you have in the kitchen. So, let's go ahead and see what we got. This backside. Oh, that is beautiful. Beautiful. What do you think, Huck? My nose is starting to go. It's okay. Huck, come on. Smell it? It's hot fire, huh? All right. Our steak's just about cooked. A few more things I want to go ahead and mention. I kind of talked about putting water on the stones. For several reasons, you don't want to do that. Uh, these stones will soak up water. Once they do, you get a little bit of heat on here, it'll make them blow up. So not only does that pose a threat of harming you, because exploding hot rocks, uh, projectiles, not a good thing, but also it's going to damage your rock. So you can break it into multiple pieces and destroy it. You want to get these rocks as hot as possible and as dry as possible. Now, if you have an area that has lots of rain, stuff like that, you can have a campfire going for several hours or days where you have some of these stones off to the side. And so the heat that comes out of the campfire and go ahead and slowly dry those stones out safely. So just a little bit of heat at a time and you'll get there. Now one of the last things I want to mention, and this is a personal pet peeve of mine, because I have made some absolutely fantastic fire rings in certain wildernesses, and I come back a couple years later and they have been shattered into a million pieces using big boulders, uh, beautiful rocks, building something that's a really good tool and everybody's got use out of it. But if you start a big fire in one of these fire rings and you decide that you have got to put it out that night, go ahead and push everything to the center, let the flames go down, add a little bit of water. Give it a few minutes, add a little bit more water. I have people dumping tons of water onto hot rocks that have been soaking up heat for hours and hours. And when that water hits those rocks, they all start to fracture. Some of them explode, a lot of them just fracture and you give it a few months, a few years, and all you're gonna be left with is a bunch of gravel and small rocks. So be considerate, think about what you're doing, be safe with fires, but please take care of my fire rings, guys. Stop throwing cold water on hot rocks, okay? Please. Sounds amazing. Smells amazing. All right, Huck. Okay. It's not exactly bacon. You smell it? Huck, up here. You smell that? Yeah. <laughs> there goes the lips. All right, so the steak's cooling down. It smells absolutely fantastic. Turn around here, bud. Okay, sit down. Now, understand, I think that everybody ought to go out there 
and at least once in their life cook a steak on a rock. It is a fabulous party trick. It is fun to do. We can warrior it up, have a blast. On the counter of that, I do teach survival. This is not really caveman technology. If you're trying to survive, you're gonna to wanna to cook your meat slowly and all the way through. So a steak, you'd wanna go a little rare and enjoy it. If you're surviving, you wanna make it as easy as possible for your guts to break down and get all the nutrients you can. Uh, on top of that, a lot of the wild food out there has worms or parasites or things that are really, really not conducive to making you feel good. So you wanna make sure that you're cooking your meat all the way through so that you kill those things and remove that risk. So with that being said, what do you think, Huck? He's being patient. Let's go ahead and cut into this and see what we got. That piece of meat just comes right off. All right. You get that piece, I get this piece. You want this? Okay. It ain't bacon, but he'll eat a good steak. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fantastic, Rube. Mm. So, how do I like my steak? I like it medium rare to rare. What I've got to deal with these days, you y'all can see that, guys. Looks good. Mm. It's got some good char on it, but it's also tender, a little bit of blood in there. I can't see well, so those of you that watch the channel, y'all know that I'm blind. The right eye's dead, the left eye barely works. So uh, I can't cook eggs in a white pan anymore, and I can't figure out how done my steak is. If y'all have any tips for that, I can't tell, I can't see very well. It's just a guess these days, because I just do not have the eyesight to make it work. Want that? Okay. Spoiled dog. Hmm. Hmm. So, guys, if you like stuff like this, I have a whole lot more videos planned up. I have a lot more that I want to show y'all. Survival, as well as uh, you're just regular camping. Good time stuff. So uh, keep tuned, watch our channel. This is Bob Hanser channel right now. The side channel is Barely Survival. So if you want more updates or more likely you just wanna watch Huck, that's where you're gonna see more of that. I am gonna go ahead and take this back to camp and let my beautiful wife, Shauna, eat on it a little bit because otherwise y'all are going to sit there and, and, and just rake me over the coals in the comment section. And I imagine she'd probably whip my tail too. So big piece of meat, plenty there, and it was cooked fantastically well so uh call it luck or call it skill it came out if y'all have any more tricks or tips on how to cook your steak go ahead and throw them in the comment section this place is all about learning and i want to learn everything that i can thank y'all for watching patreons y'all are absolutely fantastic and amazing thank you for supporting these things i think the world needs more videos like this but thank you thank you for everything y'all do take care one more, because I know y'all want me to. You want that, bud? Okay. We're the Huck Dog. So, thank y'all again for watching, group. Take care, be safe, and as always, well, till next time. That's pretty good, bud. Let's go home. I'm taking this with me. Last note, now a few folks have asked me as to whether I put fires out or not uh, when I'm done with them. Now, it's different if you're just going to spend the evening and watch the coals, but uh, I always put out fires no matter what. 
Uh, most of the time I'm back in the desert, the desert mountains. And even though there isn't a whole lot of firewood back there, the chance of starting a wildfire always exists, especially when the grasses come up some years. You wanna make sure that you keep your fires small or at least make sure that they are suited towards your purpose. You don't want a giant bonfire to try and cook your steaks or to cook over at all. So be conscious about that. Make sure that you are using your resources wisely and not ruining it for everybody else later on. Uh, if you can, time it out so that when you're done with your campfire, most of it's burned down. If you have to put it out with water right then, go ahead and push all the coals to the center, get them away from the rock walls, let those rock walls start to cool down, and then slowly put a little bit of water in, stir it around, add more water, stir it around. You slowly want to make a soup until you put it all the way out. Uh, you don't want any heat coming off of that. You don't want it making any kind of sounds. Just slowly add it. Try not to put any of that water on the rocks around your campfire ring. So be safe with it. A lot of times I'll put my hand up there, see if there's any heat 30 minutes later. A lot of the old rangers used to take a twig, put it right in the middle of the fire ring. And if before they've gotten everything rolled up and their tent's ready to go in the morning, if any smoke's coming out of that or, or any indication that heat's coming up through it, that, uh, that twig is kind of a signal flare to say that you still got a fire. So be safe again, conserve your resources, have fun with fire guys, but uh, be smart with it. Thank you all for watching again. Next time.